this model horse behind me is the same horse that was used in the movie Troy, in which Brad Pitt was acting the character of Achilles um, as a warrior, as a Greek warrior. So I'm really excited to see this and to show you guys. The Trojan horse was a wooden horse said to have been used by the Greeks during the Trojan War to enter the city of Troy and win the war. After a fruitless 10-year siege, the Greeks constructed a huge wooden horse at the behest of Odysseus and hid a select force of men inside, including Odysseus himself. 30 of the Greek best warriors hid in the Trojan horse's womb and two spies in its mouth. Some accounts suggest 40 hid inside it. The Greeks pretended to sail away and the Trojans pulled the horse into their city as a victory trophy. That night, the Greek force crept out of the horse and opened the gates for the rest of the Greek army, which had sailed back under the cover of darkness. The Greeks entered and destroyed the city, ending the war. Metaphorically, a Trojan war has come to mean any trick or stratagem that causes a target to invite a foe into a securely protected bastion or place. Okay, so today we are here at the Naval Museum. Uh, come follow me. This is called the Calais Fortress, and uh, we got the ticket. So to come into the Naval Museum, it costs 100 Turkish liras each, especially if you're not um, Turkish, then the, the cost for the foreigners would be 100 Turkish liras. If you want to bring in your camera, you have to pay an extra uh, 100 Turkish liras. Now, Çanakkale and Gallipoli, which is side by side, opposite to each other, there's a history of war over here. So the war that happened in Chernakale um, happened in 1915 and it involved at least 750,000 soldiers in there. And that is why uh, this entire area is rich with, with ammunition, with war artifacts. Um, so over here you have, like behind me, you have this, this hugely immense cannon there, which would have been used in those days as well. And there's a model aircraft over here. You see further like plane models over there, missiles, uh, many cannons that are uh, displayed over there as well. And I'm quite excited because later on we are going to be showing you a, a ship that was used during the wartime over here. So I'm really excited to go inside and have a look at that because I've never been into a ship uh, that is from that era, that is from like over a hundred years ago. What's interesting is that in 1915, the Ottomans were allied with the Germans and a lot of Europe were against the Ottomans at the time. So this was used uh, to torpedo the steamships of Britain and to eventually bring down one of the ships that was being used by Britain as well. So uh, it did its job at the time. It says over here that this unequal tower holding its head up high was built by Suleiman the Magnificent uh, with the help of Allah Sujal. An advisor told him the history, the tower of the fortress is full of esteem and grandeur. Suleiman the Magnificent or Suleiman Kanuni, as the Ottomans will call him, um, was the Sultan that was present when the Ottomans were at its pinnacle. So this has gone back to the 16th century. So this incredible looking castle was uh, built by him. And let's have a look inside. So here you see the portrait of Sultan Mehmed Fatih. Now, this castle looks incredible. It's really well maintained. And uh, let's look at this new section over here. And you see further weapons. See further cannons as well. One thing about Chanakale is that when you come over here, so my first impressions, I came here, I didn't know what to expect. And from the videos that I saw, I felt that it looked immaculate, but when I've come over here, everything that you look at is so immaculate. Uh, the way that they've maintained this place, it, it feels like the government has put a lot of money to 
Like they've set aside a budget to keep this well maintained, to keep this in pristine condition. Like you don't see space being wasted. You see a lot of land, you see a lot of farmland as well, but it's utilized in the best way possible because it enhances the surroundings. And look at this, more weaponry. Uh, one thing about wars that is, that is interesting is that wars are responsible for the advancement of technology. So a lot of technology and a lot of innovation that happens when you look back into history. Um, once I went into the NASA museum in, in Florida and we found out that a lot of inventions come from wars. So uh, you will see an advancement of technology when you come to places like this, especially in World War I. And when the two world wars happened, uh, there was a tremendous enhancement in technology as a result of that. We already saw the Perry Race Museum, but there's another gallery here regarding Perry Race. Perry Race is someone that was so advanced for his times. He was able to draw maps of where is different islands and lands that existed within Anatolia, where he advanced for his time because he came like around the 15th century. So we're going back many centuries ago and he was able to do that, which is remarkable when you look at uh, the limitations of technology at the time. Oh wow. So there's different types of cannons. Uh, one that you find behind fortress walls that they use when they see like a ship or something coming along or some enemies coming along. This one is a different type of cannon. This one is a ship cannon. And it was used in the 19th century by the British. You know? So it's quite interesting to see this one over here. And there's a whole section over here of different types of cannons that exist. Um, again, you have the British Armstrong. It comes in the second, ha second half of the 19th century. This particular cannon over here. Let's keep going. I'm sure that they would have had some sort of restoration work done over here in this castle as well, because it does look in pristine condition, considering that this would have been built, you know, a long, long time ago. So very interesting, like this is something that we get to know that many of the foreigners were involved in this war, trying to invade this land and to bring down the Ottoman Sultan at the time. Uh, but over here you see, so behind we saw the English uh, cannons. This one over here is, called the Field Howitzer Russian. So it's a Russian um, cannon that was used. Many artifacts, so you, you'll find some other ones as well. This is also a Russian one over here. Uh, this is another one. So over here we have a French Schneider, it's called. So this is a French one. This emphasizes how many uh, countries were involved in this war, trying to invade this, this, this land. That looks like an island, actually. That looks like an island, it resembles an island, although it's not really an island, but it's, it's surrounded by sea and it became easy for many of these different countries and their soldiers to come in and to invade from different angles, from, from one side, from the east and from the west. Now another one, we have a German one over here. So we know one thing that Germany were different from France and from Britain. Britain was the one that was leading this at the time but different from France, from Britain and from, from Russia and also we have New Zealand and Australia involved. Germany were different because they were allied with, with, with the Ottomans. So they were trying to help the Ottomans at the time and they still share a, they still share a good relationship even today. You find many Turkish people going into Germany and also one thing that I found interesting in, in Chernakula yesterday when we was actually in the other side in Galibolo is that a lot of German people live in this area. It's different from where we live. We live in Alanya, which is in the south of Turkey. There's a lot of foreigners there. Over here you find mostly Turkish people, but there's an area, there's a section where only German people live and reside. So that's quite interesting. Huge side. Balls of stone, you know? So if that was to oof, hit a ship or to hit like um, a few soldiers and to hit it with the velocity that would be coming out with, it's gonna be doing some serious destruction, some serious, serious damage. So you don't want none of that. Look over here, there's one ball over here. Let me see, up close. And uh, oh my, I can't even imagine, I don't think I can even pick. I think you'll need um, 10 people to be able to pick this up. <laughs> so if that hits, that can do some serious destruction and some serious damage. You don't want none of that. 
So one of my inspiring, most inspiring heroes is um, Sultan Mehmet Fatih, and he inspired the design of this entire castle. He was the one who actually got this this fortress made, and he probably anticipated three, four hundred years before that this island would be attacked. So he really built it well. Up here is um, a jami. It's called uh, Fatih Jami. So let's have a look at it. It's a it's a masjid, a mosque. So it's very simple, let's just uh, show you guys. And this is how it looks like inside. This is how it looks like inside, it's quite simple, but it's um, in a nice position it's made. All right, so we're going inside, it's the inner fortress. Okay, so this is the inner fortress, and we'll see some things over here. So, by the way, um, I've been inside here for like a good 20 minutes now and this is the inner section so you can also go upstairs as well so there's more to this fortress So this is um, really cool to see. This is called a periscope rifle, by the way, that was used. So it says here that, would you like to take a look at the opposing trenches? Now, how do you do that? It says over here that trench observation periscope. So it says you are inside the trench. You can see the opposing trenches by looking through the mirror underneath the periscope without being exposed. So. If you're on this side and you're trying to not get hit by, by the opposite side, you have this over here. Now, what you do is you go underneath like this and you look at the mirror over here and you'll be able to see whether someone is there. I can see the opposition over here. So I'm just below here and then I can just go for it. <laughs> Take a shot. So this is a really cool strategy that they used during that time. I'm no expert of guns, I've never really used one, but you can kind of like move this around if you see a couple of heads, you just go poof, you shoot. <laughs> so the mock-ups that they've made over here is um, so impressive, so commendable. The job that they've done here is so good. They've made it so lifelike. And in Turkey, there's so many museums where you go where they make these lifelike figures and they show a mock-up of how it would have been like. Now there's not much to see over here, but there is if you go right or left. So there's a couple of doorways over here and you have to kind of bend down to come inside. Oh wow, this is the Chinakale song, very famous. It's quite a sad song because a lot of people gave up their lives. This is the last photo taken before these incredible people gave up their lives for the Ottoman Sultan. Let's have a look over here. Oh wow, it's a little bit like amazing. Oh, look at this. It's like amazing here. Wow, what a place. It's got these incredible paintings here, that you can see on each side. Paintings of war, paintings of battle. And uh, as you can imagine, it does look quite dark. It looks gloomy the way that it's been painted as well. It's trying to showcase the difficulty of war. And over here as well, you've got like a fallen soldier here um, looking in distress. So they've, they've really taken it well. And maybe this is the final room over here where you have further, further portraits. So war is difficult. It's not an easy thing.
All right, so I'm excited. We are now going to go into this um, old ship over here. And it looks exactly as one of the ships would have looked like back in 1915, 170 years ago. So let's um, have a look at it. It looks, as you can imagine, as, as old as it would have been back in those days. You can see like a boat on top of it. So that would have been one of those additional boats if it's required. And uh, let's walk inside it. It comes with the museum pass that we got for 100 Turkish Liras. So, quite excited. So in the back, if you see some ammunition there, along with the Turkish flag. Look at this. Should we look? All right, so right now I'm in Çanakkale, so we're trying to get this ferry boat and it's going to take us to Ejabat, which uh, belongs to Gallipoli or Gelibolu. And it only costs about 10 liras each to get onto this. So I'm quite excited to go on to, from the Asian side onto the European side, like we do in Istanbul many times. So there's two ways you can you can step onto the ferry boat. You can also come with cars. So you can see all these cars coming out, going into Chinakale, going into the Asian side. So super excited. The weather's incredible with the sun being out, the sky being blue, the sea being blue as well. I'm excited to be uh, checking out this ferry boat over here in Chinakale. This is the upstairs section of this uh, ferry. Imagine only 10 Turkish liras. It's, not, it's nothing. It's like 50, 50 pence, British pounds wise. And uh, they also have a section downstairs which is indoors. Maybe when the weather's bad, today the weather's good. You also have a kitchen downstairs as well, so you can kind of get some snacks, you can get some drinks, as you've seen in my Bursa video where we go into the ferry from Istanbul to Bursa, Bursa back to Istanbul. So they give you all these different snacks and everything like that. And the views are marvelous. Uh, proceeding to our destination. We're going from Chinakale, as I mentioned, to Asia Bat. And uh, right now, there was this guy that was coming along with some keyrings. I wasn't really feeling like it, but then later on I looked at it, and it's got the symbol of Chinakale here. A Ottoman soldier is holding a wounded Australian soldier, and it's a symbol of how harmonious the Ottoman people were. And how compassionate they are towards even the enemies. Like they would hold their enemy and take them to the opposition side so that they can get treated. So I was like, let me just take the symbol with me as a, as a form of reminiscing and remembering this incredible trip that I've had. By the way, as I mentioned to you before, the ticket to come onto this ferry boat is like 10 liras per person. And I think from my estimation, it takes about 15 minutes to get from this side to the other side as well. So it's very swift and it saves you a lot of time as well. So you save money, you save time in terms of having to go to, the, you have to go all the way around and drive all the way around and it's, it's gonna cost you more money, take time, unless you have a car. It's best if you've got a car, you come onto here or you come onto the boat if you don't have a car even, and then uh, you can get onto the other side of Gallipoli with absolute ease. Weather is sensational, the air is incredible, and what I love about being on this ferry boat is, and I wanted to be on this because, again, the fighting wasn't just on the land. There's many areas of land that the fighting took place, but it also took place on the, on the sea as well. Some legendary battles, some legendary moments happen on this very sea. So just to be on, on top of the sea where greatness has occurred, it's, um, it's an absolute honor. 
as I said to you before, last year when I was on the Bosphorus, same thing over here, because the Bosphorus has seen uh, incredible battles from 1453, Ottomans versus the Roman Empire, or the Byzantines, and last time around 1915 over here, the Ottomans versus England, France, Russia, New Zealand, Australia, all of these countries. Incredible. So you have this section over here, uh, which is quite cool. And there's still a lot of people here, in spite of the fact that there's, it's a sunny day, it's nice, but some people like sitting inside regardless of the weather. And then over there you have a cafe, you have drinking, snacks, all that sort of stuff. So I might not get something because I've already had a big meal, but just to show you guys, if you guys come over here, maybe if you're hungry, you have a place to sit and to have some snacks as well. Okay, let's go this way. And uh, you can see we're, we're approaching our destination very close. So it's, it's only taking 10, 15 minutes to get here. Let's keep walking down. So you can see people over here preparing, the cars are preparing. The cars, there's an interesting thing with the cars. When they're coming out, there's no one to direct them. So they kind of decide for themselves how they want to, who wants to come out, what maneuver they need to make. So they're very uh, instinctive and spontaneous with that. So we're getting close over here to Asia, but what we might do from here is, the Asia, but by the way, now we get into the European side from the Asian side. So we go over here. Yesterday with our driver, Mesut, which we spoke about, uh, he was telling us that a lot of retired people live in this area. That's why when we were here yesterday, uh, the, the bus just dropped us there. And I was thinking now, wow, this is very slow paced. Uh, but I realized that it's mostly elderly people, retired people, and a very slow pace of life. But I won't criticize it. I think it's, 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 it's incredible. It's a, it's a wonderful place, uh, both sides, whether you go here or there. In Chanakale, what I found is that there's a blend of youth and, and elderly people. And it's a little bit more busy, a little bit more active. There's more endeavor over there. Um, but both are, both are good. To, to see, definitely. So, yeah, so that's the end of our trip over here on the uh, ferry boat. But you have this option if you're here, you can go by car. But I would say just come onto this.